Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update. And this is all new data. This is uh, what I'm seeing, my interpretation this afternoon and the new data. Um, so I did take uh, Colorado's forecast snow numbers down about 30% based on what I'm seeing. It looks like potentially, there's still some significant snow there, but it looks like that west-northwest flow that benefits so many places in the central and northern mountains of Colorado is going to bend away a little bit earlier. So that cuts down on the totals. Um, I've been able to drill down and really identify when I think the bulk of the snow is going to fall or accumulate. In Utah, that's 12-1 and 12-2. Maybe a little more snow on 12-8. Bulk of the snow in Wyoming, 12-1 through 12-3. Colorado, bulk of it is late 11:30 through about 12-2. I want to take you over to water vapor satellite imagery. So oranges and reds are your drier air aloft. The moisture is in blue and white. Big storm here, big storm here in the North Pacific. Both will play into the forecast. It's a little low sliding down through the southern tier of states. Minor storm, but it's undercutting the ridge of high pressure, helping to dislodge it and get this new pattern in. And there's a disturbance over Hawaii as well. But what you see here, it's anchored to two different jet streams. So you've got the southern branch playing into the forecast, and you've got the northern branch doing this. The northern branch is where most of this moisture is going to come from. In fact, I'm now looking at what's going to be a moderate to strong intensity atmospheric river. So we'll use the green to show that extra moisture above and beyond coming in with this. Again, moderate to strong, right at that uh, Washington, Oregon coastline. So what that will do is have downstream effects. Some of that moisture will be entrained in what's going to be a west-northwest flow pattern. Um, so all these little pieces coming together. Here's the forecast radar and satellite. That's the current state of affairs. By the time we get into tomorrow morning, you can see that little southern track low, Arizona, New Mexico, sliding through. By the time we get into 11.30 at 4 p.m., that's sliding out. New moisture, new energy coming into the West Coast in the form of two different contributors. Watch this. So by 12.01 at 6 a.m., you've got moisture coming in on the southern branch plus moisture and energy coming in on that northern branch. The two combining to really get the snow going a little more widespread. 12.01 in the afternoon. This is a period of what's going to be some pretty heavy snowfall in parts of the central and northern mountains of Colorado the Tetons, the Wasatch, and up in the Pacific Northwest as well. By Saturday morning, that west-northwest flow comes down, deposits snow on the Tetons, the Wasatch, the central and northern mountains of Colorado, all the way back through parts of Idaho and into the Pacific Northwest. By Saturday afternoon, same kind of thing. You can see the flow. And by Sunday morning, there's very little precip left in Colorado. And it's a little, it's a more isolated central and northern mountains, but there's still snow falling in earnest. The Tetons, parts of the Wasatch, Idaho, look at all that moisture clobbering the Pacific Northwest. By Sunday afternoon, same kind of thing. Very little moisture left over in Colorado. Still good snow falling in the Tetons, parts of the Wasatch, Idaho, and the Pacific Northwest. And by the time we get into Monday morning, it's over in Colorado. It's over. The only snow remaining is up in parts of the Tetons and Idaho at that point and B.C. And then by Monday afternoon, let me take you back to Monday afternoon, um, there's really not much left at all. Some very, very light snow over the Tetons and the reloading is happening up in the Pacific Northwest and in B.C. I want to show you this. This is the forecast integrated vapor transport to atmospheric river. Uh, a good way to read it. So this is just new moisture. This is a lot of extra moisture moving in uh, with this rich flow that reaches all the way back well into the Pacific and just drags it in on that jet stream and smashes it into that the Pacific Northwest coastline. And you can see the black line indicated here from the GEFs that it's moderate in intensity, 12-2, 12-3, and then it's strong potentially, 12-4, um, 12-5, early 12-6. So that's going to be a significant load of moisture. And again, some of that will trickle down into the Intermountain West and help with the production of um, some snowfall in the Intermountain West. Now let's talk about what's going on here with the flow. So 11.30, dip in the jet over the uh, Intermountain West, Arizona, New Mexico, Utah. Um, that's part of that wave coming through. Um, this is a more important setup right here. 
So 12-2, powerful jet, knifing down on that west-northwest orientation. And with this type of setup, at 300, yeah, it's something to take note of. But when you look at all the levels down to like ridge line, the ridge top, 10,000 foot levels, it's stacked like this. So you're getting this, this really efficient flow, taking moisture and slamming it into the... Uh, um, to the Tetons and the Wasatch, which, which have perfect orientation because it's coming in perpendicular and it's lifting that air. And in Colorado, the central and northern mountains would be, um, would be a way to look at it. That's the area that's going to get the most snow out of this as well. But the problem here is while it looks good on 12-2, and it is, it starts to bend away and become even more north-northwest by Sunday and by Monday it's more north and it's almost non-existent. So the moisture will disappear faster in Colorado versus what I was thinking this morning. So you have no other out, you have no other choice but to cut down on the snow. That's just my interpretation. That's why I cut the numbers in Colorado. Here's the last wave coming through, 12.8, 12.9, somewhere right in there. That you can see the little short wave and that'll move from the Pacific Northwest into Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, and Colorado with a few more inches of accumulation. So the numbers look like this. 11.29, the rest of today through 12.4. I really didn't change much in Wyoming, a little over two feet. Um, the numbers in the Wasatch haven't changed really um, that much. Um, we'll have to see. If I, were, if, if I were to say my confidence level in what area is at risk of changing even more, it would be Colorado and then potentially parts of the Wasatch, but we'll see. I didn't change anything there right now. In Colorado, again, I cut about 30% off the numbers, but I think some areas will still get to a foot if this pattern holds um, across the western slope. Steamboat, Snowmass, Aspen, Crested Butte, Powderhorn, maybe even Silverton. We'll see. Um, and then let, Vail would probably be close to a foot. And then less as you get into Summit County, less on the Continental Divide. The numbers are still big in the Pacific Northwest. They're still big in the, in the central, in the heart right there of uh, Idaho around Brundage. So not a lot has changed except for Colorado on that map. I didn't change the snow plume at all. I kept it the way it was. So accumulation over time for Jackson Hole and the Tetons. Again, looking at a little over two feet um, between those key days of 12-1, uh, 12-2, and 12-3. Maybe a little bit more on 12-8, a tiny bit more. Um, and here's the, the last period, 12-5 through 12-8. That last low will come in out of the Pacific Northwest and deliver potentially another three to six for Wyoming, the Wasatch, and eventually Colorado on eight and nine of that period. I did update my numbers for the northeast. You can see snow's a little more widespread here on this update from um, 1129 through 128. Two waves will really bring this snow to uh, the ski areas. Um, the first one comes through 12.1 and 12.2. The second one comes in on 12.4. And there might be a third wave or a third storm system on 12.9. So that's the way everything looks in this afternoon update, guys. All new data. Uh, always appreciate you tuning in here for these updates and take care.